Welcome to my channel. I have started a series called Today's Blessing, and I don't do it every day, but I do it when I f find things that I think might be of interest to you. And I have one of those today. So, this is Today's Blessing. The Top 10 Bibl Biblical Archaeology Finds of 2023. Before we get into the video, I want to talk to you just a little bit about uh, what's been going on in archaeology. For a long time, secular scholars, people who don't use the Bible as their guide for archaeology and who don't believe the Bible is accurate, have insisted that David was a legendary figure and never really existed. King David, the king of the Israelites. Well, recent, in the past 10 years, archaeological discoveries have blown that belief completely out of the water. And as we keep finding more and more, what we're finding is that the Bible is a historically accurate document. When we dig up archaeological sites, we discover that they match what the Bible says. And we find this repeatedly. If this isn't a subject that you pay much attention to, and if you're one of those people who thinks the Bible is nothing but fables and myth, you might want to follow some of this information because the more we dig up, the more we prove the Bible is factual, historical evidence. So, this particular video that I'm going to share just a brief part of it with you is put out by the Armstrong Institute of Biblical Archaeology and they are actually doing archaeological digs in Jerusalem and in uh, Israel and in Gaza and various places around in the Middle East and they've been finding all sorts of fascinating things and this top 10 biblical archaeological archaeology finds are not just what Armstrong Institute has done, it's also what other people have done. But each year they do a top 10 finds, and this is the top 10 finds for 2023. And it has, uh, let's say it has exploded a lot of the false information that secular archeologists have spread about the Bible. So without further ado, Let's get into the video. But let me start by saying, I really appreciate you coming here. And I'm very thankful that you're willing to listen to me speaking about God, because that's important to me. So thank you. Hello and welcome back to Let the Stone Speak. I'm Brent Nuktagal. I'm here actually in Oklahoma where we've just opened this amazing archaeological exhibit, it's entitled Kingdom of David and Solomon Discovered, where we've collected an array of, dis of artifacts from Israel from the 10th century and brought them all into one place. Um, this is the reason why we haven't had a podcast in some time, so thank you very much for bearing with me. I actually recorded what you're going to watch with Christopher Reams from our Jerusalem office. It's our top 10 discoveries in biblical archaeology from 2023. And I recorded this about three weeks ago before the opening of the exhibit this past weekend. And it got crazy, didn't have time to edit it. Um, so now I'm doing the intro after the actual recording of the top 10 discoveries from last year. Nevertheless, they haven't changed since it's just clicking over into March right now. So I do hope that you enjoy this video. If you do like it, please go ahead to like and subscribe to our channel. And then also, if you like the content and if you like David and Solomon and the archeological evidence backing up uh, their existence, as the Bible describes, we do have this magazine. This is a special issue of the Let the Stone Speak magazine. It's about 140 pages and goes through all the scientific evidence that supports what we have in this exhibit. If you would like a copy of this magazine, please go to armstronginstitute.org and scroll down, you'll see a place where you can enter in your information for the magazine and get it online, or you can get it delivered to your home for absolutely nothing, it's free, or you can write an email to letters at armstronginstitute.org 
and that'll make sure that you get a copy of the magazine. For now, here's Chris and I discussing our top 10 discoveries from 2023. With that said, we're gonna get into our top 10. Um, <clears throat> in order to do this, I have Christopher Eames from our Armstrong Institute in Jerusalem to help me go through this. Welcome, Chris. Hello, Brent. It's good to be here. It's been a little while since one, we've done one of these sit downs. Yeah, it certainly has. And, and uh, it's due course. Our last year when we did the, the top 10, we, we did recorded it, I think, a week after this time. So middle February, a bit later. So we're one week ahead of when we did it last year. Some people's top 10, they came out uh, even before 2023 was done. So I don't know, they weren't very hopeful for the last days of, of 20, 2023. We gave it some extra time just in case some other discoveries rolled in. Uh, so what, what follows is our top 10 list of biblical archaeology uh, discoveries for 2023. Some of these are in the form of individual small finds. Others are site finds. Some are the product of general research and publication as well. So they're not necessarily things that have come out of the earth in 2023, but they could be like a groundbreaking study for, of the, the biblical period uh, that came out in 2023. So let's start with number 10, and I'll kick that to you, Chris. Okay, so number 10, we've got the oldest known gate ever discovered in the Holy Land up to this point. Uh, this was in August the announcement came through from Tel Irani. So Tel Irani is a site in the Judean Shvila, the, the lowlands just northeast of the Gaza Strip. Major site uh, dating to the early Bronze Age 1B. So that's around about 5,500 years ago, this gatehouse uh, or, or this gate complex that was discovered. Uh, so the, the remains were preserved to a height of about 1.5 meters uh, and consist of large monolithic stones and also mud brick. Uh, there's a, a, a gate passageway that they, they found at the site and it's flanked on both sides by two towers. So a really significant fortification uh, system, including a gate and including a wall of a width of about seven to eight meters wide. So really early, uh, which, which made it newsworthy and significant, uh, but also powerful uh, fortress of, of such an early time period here, really uh, a time period that we start to see the development of urbanization. So that's in top 10. And I think we're going to go through these top, uh, the, these first five pretty quickly. So I'll kick it back to you for number nine. Yeah, number nine is the first use of a corbelled vault, and this was discovered at Tel Shimron. This is in the uh, the area between the Sea of Galilee and, and uh, Haifa, Jezreel Valley, uh, Tel Shimron, uh, and this this dates back to the Middle Bronze Age as well. So three or, or Middle Bronze Age, so three thousand eight hundred years ago, they were excavating the, this tell, which they have done for several years by Daniel Master and Mario Martin, and. Um, what was interesting is they, they found this really extra raised platform, if we can call it that, uh, on top of the tell. This is a tower that stood about five meters tall. And in the middle of the tower is this corridor that was filled up that then go down, uh, turned a corner, and went down into a, a kind of a descending staircase with the ceiling being this co co uh, corbelled vault, which is kind of like a precursor to the arch. If, if people have been to Tel Dan in the north of north of Israel, they'll see the Abrahamic Gate, as it's called there, and you have this arch that's that's made out of mud brick, but it's it's it's. Um it's, it's an actual arch, a smooth arch, if I can call it that. This one has bricks that come and go up and uh, up uh, like a staggered roof. Um, and so this was the first ever time uh, that this has been discovered uh, in the Levant, especially from this early. And normally you don't find these preserved. The, this was unfired mud brick. And so they found this preserved because the excavators believe it was made and then pretty soon after it was backfilled, it was real refilled and, and uh, shortly thereafter. So it was preserved for 3,800 years. This is what Daniel Master wrote about it. Again, he was the co-director here. Uh, he said, the Tel, Tel Shimron passageway with cobbled vault is an important gap, fills an important gap in the history of architecture in this region. Uh, the vault is an ancestor to the mud brick radial arch uh, that you see in other sites throughout Israel. So really amazing to see something of this fully preserved uh, uh, vaulted archway uh, coming out of Tel Shimron in, in the north central of, of Israel. All right, Chris, number eight. 
Okay, this is patriarchal period currency. So this was a study published in the Journal of Archaeological Science last year that concluded that uh, silver pieces, or hack silver, as they're known as, were, were used as currency in the Levant at the time of the biblical patriarchs, so during the Middle Bronze Age, so the first half of the second millennium BCE. So it was initially believed that the silver currency was uh, more used during the Iron Age, so from about 1200 BCE onwards. So this study basically looked at silver hoards that were found in these southern Levant areas that dated much earlier. So, so these aren't, this isn't the type of currency where you think of coins being used. These are chopped up pieces of silver at this time period that are being used. Now some difficulty comes along when you're trying to determine is, are these just pieces from a silver workshop or are these pieces actually being used and weighed out as currency? So, so what the study concluded was that these hoards were in areas not associated at all with silver working, but in fact they were being uh, gathered and used for their intrin intrinsic value and therefore being used properly as hack silver and weighed out as such as a form of currency. And this was kind of exciting because the, the several passages in the Bible that talk about this practice of weighing out silver. And uh, even more exciting was the location uh, of the silver, the origin of the silver. So isotopic testing of the silver determined that it had come from the Hittite area up in Anatolia, modern day Turkey. Uh, and then you've got the classic example in the Bible of Genesis 23 and uh, Abraham's interactions with, with the Hittites, the children of Heth and Ephron the Hittite, uh, and weighing out silver to Ephron the Hittite to buy some land from him. So it shows this, current, this kind of currency, uh, weighed out silver, was being used at that time period, and even a connection with the Hittites there. Okay, number seven is ancient Israelite DNA. This is just a brief one, and this isn't so much of a discovery as in the potential for future discoveries. So this was the discovery of basically a rare, clean and clear first temple period burial site, Israelite family burial at Kirjath Jerim or Kiryat Yarim, uh, with remains of the burial preserved enough to where DNA could be extracted. So basically this is the first time that clean and clear ancient Israelite DNA has been able to be recovered. That's not to say it's never happened before, uh, but, but there's, there's always the questions like at, at, in some of these burials. Like is, are we sure that this is an Israelite burial versus say, from a Canaanite burial or Moabite or from, from some of these other surroundings. But this was a very clean and clear burial and not only that, um, in many cases it, it can be impossible to retrieve properly preserved DNA remains. So in this case they were able to do so and from two uh, members of this apparently fami family burial at Kirjath Jerim. So, this is at least a start that researchers can, can use to, to further investigate uh, Israelite DNA, ancient Israelite DNA, and Israelite origins. So we look forward to what comes from that. Over to you for number six, Brent. Yeah, I'll take the next two, uh, six and five. And six is actually two discoveries, I suppose. Um, this was interesting because uh, it made the, or part of this discovery made the uh, top of the top 10 list of, archaeologi of archaeological finds um, for the National Geographic. So you might have actually heard this discovery of four Roman era swords that were found uh, in this area overlooking the Dead Sea in a cave. Um, really interesting. Everyone likes to find gold, treasure, or weapons. And so this, this is the weapon category. They've been dated to... Um, the general use in Judea in the first century and a little bit thereafter. Um, and so they, they assumed that these were swords, Roman swords that were taken probably by Jewish uh, renegades that hid them because uh, they were found in, found in a cave quite well hidden uh, and then to be used in a, at a later time in the Bar, Kok Bar Kokhba uh, revolts most likely. They're not exactly sure, but nevertheless, these 
four well-preserved uh, uh, swords. Uh, incredible discovery, and this was discovered by Ariel University's Dr. Asaf Gaia and his team. Uh, they, they were actually there for a whole different purpose. Um, Previously, in the in the early 70s, there was an excavation of this cave, or an investigation of this cave, I should say, where they discovered a Paleo-Hebrew inscription on a on a stalic tite or stalic mite, can't remember. Um, nevertheless, stalic tite. Okay, so they held, hold tight to the roof, if I recall correctly. So coming down from the ceiling, and it was partly translated back in the 70s, and it uh, might have said God on it. It was perhaps a blessing they believe there's, only, there's about nine lines of text i believe and only a couple of them were partially translated back then that that looked like it mimicked a, a blessing in the bible of of thank you god for kind of preserving us in this uh desolate area this wilderness and so the original goal of this team uh, recently was to go back and investigate that use modern technology and see if they can find out more of this inscription and what they did find, and more of this is going to come out, but at least they've released so far that they have found the phrase on another line that says the Valley of Salt. And this is interesting because it's found overlooking the Valley of Salt or part of the Valley of Salt overlooking the Salt Sea, uh, Yam Hamalech, as it's known in the Bible. And so here you've got a biblical use of, the, of this geographic region a, a, a use outside the Bible, I should say, of how the Bible describes this geographic region. So you've got a biblical text that uses Valley of Salt and the way that it's spelt in particular, and it's the same in this Paleo-Hebrew inscription. So they don't have exact date for this. I think it's sometime in the late uh, 7th and 8th century. Do you remember, Chris? Uh, no, I don't. Second half of the um, First Temple period. Okay, yeah, so towards towards the end of the First Temple period, uh, so still early, and we just don't have that many conclusive uh, inscriptions uh, well, inscriptions from this period. I guess we do have a few, but we'd always like more. So um, so this was just an exciting d as discovery as well, using modern technology to try and decipher inscriptions that were known previously. So congratulations to that team on that, and we look forward to more that's going to be put out about that in the future. This next discovery, number five, is the city of David Moat uh, and the bedrock channels that were found in the Gavati parking lot excavation. If you've been... Okay, I'm going to stop it here. And obviously I'll put the link in the description and you're welcome to watch it yourself and see what the top five are. Some of them are pretty impressive. Uh, but a couple of things I want to talk about here that, that came to mind while I was watching this again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It always amazes me that archaeologists are willing to make definitive statements about things they have no knowledge of. For example, archaeologists have insisted for a long time that King David was a myth, that he was a legend. They didn't have any evidence, but the lack of evidence is not proof of the lack of the thing. And they ought to know that. They're trained to know that. But for some reason, they feel the need to say there's no evidence of this, and therefore it didn't exist. And the therefore part is false. It's clearly false because they can't know that. And what's, what's happening now is all of these recent discoveries that they're making are just blowing holes all over the theories of archaeologists who didn't observe the Bible, didn't want to get the Bible involved in their archaeology and were basically secular. And and so it, it just, it's not the scientific method. It just isn't to say that because you lack evidence, you have proof there was no evidence. That's just not scientific. And yet, Archaeology, the, the discipline of archaeology, is rife with such statements. And, and strangely enough, if you want, I mean, I'm being uh, ironic here, but strangely enough, those statements are always in opposition to what the Bible says. But now, as we gather more and more evidence, we're finding that the Bible is historically accurate. And if the Bible is historically accurate, you have to ask yourself, is it accurate about everything? 
And does that involve me? Because it does. Now, for me personally, my faith does not require these proofs. I already believe. And, and you know, I am, you, you can watch my video um, that I, that I made a long, long time ago about how I know that there is a God. Uh, but for me personally, uh, this is just like, it's like icing on the cake. It's like, yeah, I, I knew this to be true already, but it's great that you've now proven it because when they prove it, it will convince some of the naysayers. And I wish every naysayer on earth could be convinced not only that God exists, but that God loves them. So, just some of my thoughts. Uh, you know, it, it's... Th there was an argument that a lot of the... For example, the, the silver find that they found that was dated, uh, I think it was 3500 BC. They previously insisted that that practice didn't happen until the, uh, until the 11th century BC. Well, how could they insist that? They didn't know. They had no knowledge. They had no evidence. So how can you make a statement like that when you have zero evidence? You cannot unless you're trying to introduce your own beliefs into your science. And that's wrong. Science should be about the evidence. It should be, let's look at the evidence and see what the evidence tells us. Now, once you've found that evidence, you can have arguments about what it means. There's no question about that. They will argue about what exactly it means and exactly what the dates are. But now with carbon dating, that's getting harder to argue because the carbon dating establishes, and you'll see that in the top five, by the way, that certain things happened at certain times. And they prove that the rule of David and the rule of Solomon actually did exist. So, my prayer for you is that if you have watched this video and you are not a believer, you do not yet believe in Jesus Christ and in God and the Bible, that you will investigate this for yourself and that you will find that the Bible is a historically accurate document. And therefore, you should pay attention to what else it says from a spiritual point of view. That's my prayer for you and for everyone that you love. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.